Shoot. Clerk will call the roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy C. Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Marty Van Ravensway, Commissioner Precinct 2. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our invocation today will be delivered by Dr. Scott uh, Woodell from a senior pastor at Redeemer Bible Church in Fort Worth. Thank you very much for coming out today, sir. If everybody will please remain standing after the invocation for our pledges. Father, we begin this session of court recognizing you're the creator of heaven and earth. You have created us in your image. We also recognize that you have appointed government to dispense justice and grace. Government officials bear such a great burden and they carry a heavy responsibility. We thank you for those who have given their lives to helping to govern our county, our city, our state in ways that reflect your justice and grace. We ask that you'd give the court wisdom, the wisdom of Solomon, patience of Job, the faith of Abraham, but mostly the compassion of Christ. May the words that are spoken and the decisions that are made be for our betterment and your glory. And this we pray in Jesus' name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Manius, agenda announcements. Huh? Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the Court, we have three announcements for you this morning. <clears throat> the first announcement is under the District Attorney's Office, item 8C5. <clears throat> there is a revised court communication as it relates to that particular item. Uh, this revision is the comments from the Auditor's Office as it relates to the Chapter 59 asset report. The second item is under purchasing item 8G4. This is bid number 2011-013. As with all recycled paper um, bids, um, we get those bids on Monday. So you have a revised court communication that shows the results of those bids. And then finally, members of the court, uh, just a quick reminder that uh, this coming Friday at 2.30 we will be holding a very short meeting to canvass the votes of the um, November general election. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of November the 2nd. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, we have uh, one proclamation on the uh, agenda today, and I will read that. It's. Uh, Proclamation regarding Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, whereas pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers and is the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and this year an estimated 43,140 people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States, and 36,800 will die from the disease. And whereas when symptoms of pancreatic cancer present themselves, it is usually too late for an optimistic prognosis and 75% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first year of their diagnosis, while 94% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first five years. And whereas approximately 2,200 deaths occur in Texas, the incidence of pancreatic cancer is 50% higher in African Americans than in other ethnic groups, and there is no cure for pancreatic cancer. And whereas the federal government invests significantly less money in pancreatic cancer research than it does in any other leading cancer killers, constituting only 2% of the National Cancer Institute's federal research funding. And whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is the first and only national patient advocacy organization that serves the pancreatic cancer community in Tarrant County and nationwide by focusing its efforts 
on public policy, research funding, patient services, and public awareness and education related to developing effective treatments and a cure for pancreatic cancer. And whereas the good health and well-being of the residents of Tarrant County are enhanced as a direct result of increased awareness about pancreatic cancer and research into early detection causes and effective treatments, now therefore be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby proclaim the month of November 2010 as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in Tarrant County. In witness whereof, we are here to set our hands and cause the, the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this ninth day of November 2010. I will move its approval. I will second with a comment. My brother-in-law, Dr. William C. Bryant, Jr., of Ingham County, Michigan, died of pancreatic cancer will be two years ago next week. I uh, think that this is a, a disease that deserves our nation's attention. It deserves more funding. As in all health disparities, the goal of our nation should be to eliminate those, to provide one standard of health for all of our people, and uh, this is a step in that direction. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously in Virginia, and F.W. Griffin are here to accept the plaque. If you all would please come forward at this time. Commissioner Brooks, would you like to? Join me You'll recall also last week we, uh, uh, in recognizing one of our employees, her mother had passed away from pancreatic cancer, Elizabeth Audley Stalker. Tarrant County Judge Whitley and Court, distinguished guests, and Pancreatic Cancer Action Network volunteer, my husband. <laughs> um, on behalf of the Dallas Fort Worth affiliate of the Pancreatic <coughs> Cancer Action Network, we would like to thank you for this opportunity to address the court. The Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is the only national organization <coughs> creating hope in a comprehensive way through research, patient support, community outreach, and advocacy for a cure. I am here today because I lost my 59-year-old brother and our 45-year-old niece to pancreatic cancer in 2002. My niece was our older brother's daughter. They were diagnosed six months apart. My brother asked me, though I couldn't change the outcome for him or our niece, to do all I could to change the future for others who would face this disease. September a year ago, my cousin died five weeks after she was diagnosed. <coughs> it isn't my life only and the lives of my family members who have been touched by this disease. This is a problem that can affect our entire community. In fact, estimates predict that the incidence of pancreatic cancer cases is expected to increase by 55% between 2010 and 2030. Moreover, an estimated 2,200 will die from pancreatic cancer in Texas alone. And countrywide, it's estimated that 36,800 individuals will lose their battle to pancreatic cancer this year. Because there are currently no early detection tools or effective treatment, just 6% of those diagnosed will survive more than five years. We would like to thank Judge Whitley and the court 
for your important contribution to this national fight against pancreatic cancer. By declaring November to be Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in Tarrant County, you're helping us to do critical work of making the public aware of this disease and its truly lethal nature. We hope by working together with you, we will be able to continue to increase awareness, support patients and their families, and raise funds for the cure through both individual contributions and federal funding and legislation. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I would encourage you to visit our website at www.pancan.org or call our toll-free number, which I'd be happy to give you to learn more about pancreatic cancer, our organization and its mission, and the research that we fund the comprehensive, no-cost services to the people that we provide. I will join hundreds next Sunday for our affiliates' second Purple Stride 5K. I'm not going to be able to walk real good, being as I had foot surgery a couple of months ago, but I'll be there supporting them. Um, thank you again for supporting our cause and helping to raise awareness of pancreatic cancer. And I'd like to put a picture. I want a face to the numbers. And so, by the way, that is what my car looks like. I'm a driving billboard. <laughs> and this is my brother. That's my horse he was on. He had a great sense of humor. And he was my mentor. And now I'm older than he was when he died. That is my niece, 45 years old. She left three children behind. And I have met too many others as I've dealt with volunteering the past nine years. And it's, it's horrendous to me to see what has is happening and I want to see it change. I have been to Washington, D.C. for the last five years to tell them less than 2% of the National Cancer Institute's research funding is not enough for the fourth leading cancer killer. And so we keep on hammering away at that and we're going to see what we can do to change the future for others. And if anybody has any questions, <laughs> I'd be happy to address it. And Thank I do you. want to give you all ribbons up there and my card. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. and Ms. Griffin, for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. <laughs> Court members, you have before you uh, the consent agenda. Of approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Manius. Your Honor, I'd like to defer on that one item that I have until at the end of this court session, please. Okay. Uh, District Attorney, Mr. Wright. Thank you, Your Honor. I have uh, one item on subrogation recoveries, uh, requesting authorization for the county, uh, the county commissioner's court to authorize the auditor to cash this check in the amount of $250. Uh, but, uh, representing partial recovery of our subrogation interest. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Ms. Glenn. Nope, doesn't look like Ms. Glenn. Doesn't. Good morning. 
Our first item is that we request that you receive and file the personnel agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file personnel agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our second item is that we're requesting the approval of a new hire background check policy. You might remember back in August we brought you a draft of this policy. And after bringing you the draft, we did send uh, the, the draft policy out to the department heads to receive comments from them. And um, for the most part, most supported this and look forward to begin to use the process. Um, there were some concerns about the fact that at that time, as it was presented to you originally, that each department would be responsible for paying for their own background checks, and they were concerned about that. And, of course, then there were some concerns about how the process would work in general and, and whether it was going to be decentralized or who would have the final decisions in um, making the hiring decisions based on the results of the background check. And based on those comments and our research of this um, process, we have recommendations. We would like to recommend that we create a centralized budget for the payment of the background check so that the departments are not responsible individually. We do not expect this to exceed 15000 for the remainder of fiscal year 2011. We would like to make this policy effective in March which would give us enough time to work with the departments to determine what their criteria is and set up our formal procedure. We would like to require that all new hires be subject to the, background, the criminal background check and that the motor vehicle and the financial background check be based on the duties of the position um, and whether they would be necessary for those specific positions. Uh, human resources will work with the departments to de determine which positions should have the financial and motor vehicle background check. Um, we have some questions that we'll ask the departments or the departments can look at each position to determine that. <clears throat> and of course we will allow the departments to still have the final hiring decisions just as they do now based on the candidates' qualifications and the results of those background checks. And of course we would expect them to make those in a non-discriminatory and non-retaliatory manner just as we expect them to do now. And so we have provided you with a draft of this policy, and I'd be glad to answer any questions or receive any comments. What is the benefit of this change from, from your department to now all departments? Uh, what's the reason for that? Why we're, why we're asking that all new hires be subject to the background check? No, why you're asking each department to do their own? Well, we're, we're not asking them to do their own. What will happen is, as we have the procedure lined out, is once a department has identified who they have selected they want to hire, so they've gone through their interview process and they have selected a candidate, then they will notify us. We will get with that candidate and have them sign the proper authorization forms to be in compliance with the law, and then we will work with the background check company to have them conduct the background check. The results will come back to us, and then we will give those results to the hiring department. The hiring department will have final decision on who they, whether they select that candidate to hire or if they want to reject that candidate and move on to another candidate. So it, it will still be the department's uh, hiring decision. We will work with them so that they develop criteria so they're consistent in the way they apply their criteria based on the type of position. Does, does that answer your question? Question. So it's being done, we're still doing it centrally, but everybody will have, everybody who's hired will have a background check as opposed to a criminal background check, a criminal background check instead of. And, 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 right, and, and right now the only thing that we, we centrally do is a human resources department verifies that they in fact have the degree, the educational requirement that they've stated they have on their application. It's the department's responsibility currently to do reference checks and um, employment history checks. We don't do that centrally now. And let me be sh I'm sorry, Commissioner. No, well, I, I just have you know. a question. On, on this background check, so you're going to, the, the hiring, whoever's doing the hiring, whatever department, mm -hmm. they're going to go to you in the day one, they're going to say, we need to hire somebody, somebody's leaving or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go through your process to post that position, get the applications in, you're going to go through the applications, and I'm assuming give whoever's doing the hiring, you know, the 50 or 40 or mm -hmm. 20 or whatever, then they're going to whittle that down to 7, 8, 10, and then they're going to sit down and interview 
I'm, I'm just assuming this is what we've done in my area. But uh, so they come up with that person. Okay, then they're going to tell you to do the background check at that point. Correct. How long does that take? Well, uh, it's done electronically. So depending on whether we have access to that employee and be able to, uh, through email, if, we, if they have an email account, we can send them the authorization form via email and they can return it to us that way. If they have to come in or we have to mail them to, it may take a little longer. The turnaround time uh, for the uh, most complex uh, background check is about two or three days, so it's a, it's a very quick turnaround Okay, time. so it's, it's a quick process. Correct. It's yeah. not We're not talking about weeks, weeks or, or, no, no, sir. In no, this sir. background check, you're checking education. No. 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 We currently. Is it, it's a criminal background. The, 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 the background check policy that we're asking you to look at primarily a, 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 uh, deals with criminal, motor vehicle, and financial. Currently, we, we do, at, once the applicant is selected and they're in processing, we do require that they provide us with whatever educational attainment, a copy of their transcript from their degree or their diploma if it's a high school or a GED certificate. Uh, as far as employment history, that's the responsibility of the department. And on their application, we ask if there's any criminal history, don't we? Correct. Right. And, and obviously, if they've indicated that there is not, is, not. they do not, and we find something, then that, that is an issue as well because they've sure. not been. Okay. Okay. Any other? Yes, sir. I have tried to work with HR since they first proposed this policy to make sure that it had a non-discriminatory impact on our hiring policies. I am of the opinion that we as a governmental entity representing the people of this county should be about expanding the opportunities for those coming back to our community from the criminal justice system rather than creating additional barriers. Um, I think that by expanding our background check policy, even in non-sensitive positions, to include every new hire, we are setting up additional barriers to employment that we don't need to be doing. I will not support this policy. I will not vote for it. And I think it's the wrong thing to do. <clears throat> Any other uh, comments or questions at this time? Do I have a motion at this time? I move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes four to one. And our final item is a request for approval of a waiver of terminal benefits and to double fill a position in Precinct 1. The office administrator will be retiring in December, and she has 400 hours of vacation. And so due to the critical nature of this, the duties performed by this incumbent, they are requesting a waiver. And in addition to that, for the month of December, they would like to double fill the position to allow the new incumbent to be trained um, in these critical duties. The net fiscal impact of the general fund will be $15,857. I'll second the motion. Obviously, I need <laughs> approval. Yes, sir. I question the dollar amount. Is that the amount of the terminal benefits? That's the net fiscal input. The, the waiver will be 10797 and the double fill will be a little over 5000 so A total of 15000 for both of those pieces. But uh, we've got salary savings in that the uh, one of our positions has been vacant for almost three months. And so the net fiscal impact is less than that. It, it may be based on your attrition, right, through vacancies. That so you're you talking to just, we're just the moment. What you're doing is you're just simply taking the position. Yeah. Just this position. Okay. And, and of course, we just started the new fiscal year um, in October, okay. so and our position was vacant some 
prior to that as well. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beecham. Go Tigers. How'd your, how'd your Arkansas boys do this? Surely, uh, yes, we will, even, even the Aggies found a, uh, they found an acre, did they? They found an acre this weekend, didn't they? <laughs> found one the last three weekends. Texas looks so lonely at the bottom of the Big 12 standings. <laughs> we have five items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is, a, is an RFQ number 2011-002. Request for qualification for radiology, radiology and diagnostic services for the Public Health Department. A recommendation will be to award the Radiology Associates of Tarrant County. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is also a bid award recommendation for our bid number 2011-006. Submit for the removal of the two angel sculptures on the old Tarrant County Civil Courts building. <clears throat> recommendation would be to award the Phoenix One restoration and construction. If approved, seek a contract approval and acceptance of the payments and the performance bond. We did receive a bid from a company called Mid-Continental uh, Restoration. Uh, they withdrew their bid for not including the uh, required contingency fund. Mr. Phillips is here to answer questions. <laughs> uh, this is a very sensitive project and requires a high level of specialized skill. Have we investigated this company to make sure that they can do what they claim they can do? Based upon the range of bids that I've heard over the last six months, yes. <laughs> Would you like to expand? We, we met with them, had a scope review meeting with the commissioner. They explained their means and methods of removing the angel um, box, and we believe it can be done. By them? Yes. Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Number three is another bid award recommendation for our bid number 2011-007. This is our annual con contract for Type 1 Portland Cement. The recommendation will be due to Ash Grove, Texas on a premium price basis. Not that it matters, but are these the people that we're in a lawsuit with? What do you mean it doesn't matter? <laughs> that what? Are, are we still in a lawsuit with these people? I think we're having conversations with them still, yes. <laughs> Was the suit fine? No, no. The no. no. We're out. We got out. We're out. The lawsuit is still going. Okay, but we're out. They're not suing us right now. Okay. This, this is just a one-year contract, which we've right. done. For a while. Not that that would matter in a bid. I, oh. I'm just asking. Yes, sir. If, information. Okay. Was that in the form of a motion? Almost. How much do you think we spent getting out of that? Who knows? Not much. Okay. We have those folks on retainer. They they work for us year round. I know. I know. Okay. Yeah, that's in the form of a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes three to two. Our fourth item is a bid award recommendation for our bid number 2011-013, sale recycled paper. The recommendation will be toward the high bidder, Evergreen Fiber Sales, at the rate of forty dollars per ton. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our last item, number five, is an item in regards to RFP number 2010-119. This is an RFP uh, for CSCD for Offender Specimen Collection and Drug Testing Services. Uh, we are re uh, recommending rejection of all proposals. Uh, Greg Williams is here to answer questions if you have them from CSCD. No approval. Second for the sake of argument. We have a motion and a second for the sake of argument. Would you like to ask some questions? No. I think he's prepared to talk to us. Mm. I, no, I'm just here for a qu any answers. That you might, any questions you might have. If you're here for any answers that we might have, you're gonna, sure. we give the answer, you're going to propose the question? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like Jeopardy, Jeopardy isn't it? that's right. Cornac. No, we're good. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you.
Ms. Lamb, are you coming forward today? No, you're under. I'm sorry, you're all. You were under. Uh, I just going to say like. Scared me for a moment. <laughs> sorry about that. Any appointments? There being none, you have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. I have a motion a second to approve the claims, including the addendum. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Manius, I believe you have an item still yes. on the agenda. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Members of the court, if we could go back to the administrator's office. Item A1. Well, if we just go back to your report. I hate to adjourn and go down to your office. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm trying to catch my, uh, my train of thought here again. <laughs> We're requesting that the court approve a resolution relating to the issuance of tax exempt series 2010 revenue bonds by the Tarrant County Cultural Education Facilities Finance Corp to Texas Health Resources, the amount not to exceed $160 million, and to approve a one or more tax exempt loans to Texas Health Resources in an aggregate amount not to exceed $150 million. I'd like to advise the court that this um, this particular bond sale is um, one that uh, is for facilities in multiple counties including Tarrant County that the county judges of those other counties have have approved of um, the issuance of these of this debt also that um, the requirements are to meet uh, the IRS requirements under section 147f also the uh, the Historically underutilized business uh, letter is received, and uh, we are requesting approval by the court. This time. So moved. Second. There was one thing you didn't mention. Do they have any restrictions on I property? apologize. As the court communication says, they do not have any restrictions on any of their property. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. We do not have any briefing items at this time. Thank you. Probably this time we'll recess our open session and move to close session to discuss items exempted under 551.071, 072, 074, 076, and 087 of the Texas Government Code. It's only taken me four years. session and there being no business to conduct at this time we are adjourned well, since Susan went I mean since Sandra went to lunch I'll